Free speech is not a bargaining chip. It's not something for lawyers to dissect to their advantage or for politicians to trade away for cheap votes. It's sacred. And that's a concept that some religious people seem to have trouble understanding. Just when we thought the United Nations couldn't get any more useless, something called the Organization of Islamic Conference, which is a fancy way of saying a Saudi-funded cartel of Islamic dictatorships, has been allowed to hijack the United Nations Human Rights Council, thus rendering it instantly and permanently worthless. Nevertheless, with all the plodding predictability of a Hollywood car chase, their first order of business was to pass a resolution banning criticism of Islam and Sharia, and by extension of their own barbaric regimes, with all the stonings and beheadings, amputations and female genital mutilation that so disgusts everyone in the civilised world. In other words, they've tried to make it illegal to criticise evil. A bit like abolishing penicillin because the bacteria are offended. You know, I thought the United Nations existed to help drag countries like this out of the Stone Age, not for them to drag everybody else back there. But apparently not, because next April in Geneva, the United Nations is hosting a conference on racism at which this manipulative nonsense is likely to be enshrined, giving Islam special status in international law. And given the kind of unprincipled leaders we have in the West right now, especially here in Europe, there's every chance that this could have a real effect on our freedom of expression in the civilised world. Because Islam has a notoriously one-sided view of free speech, just as it has a one-sided view of everything else. If you criticise Islam publicly, you will be abused and threatened almost beyond belief, as an army of hysterical, brainwashed illiteramuses line up to shit the contents of their minds into your mailbox. Check out the feedback page on my website for an idea of what you can expect. And maybe some of you lefty, liberal, multicultural pricks who are always telling me that Islam is peace, maybe you'd like to take a look as well. That's if you can bear to pull your heads out of your America-hating asses for five minutes. Islam is peace is a message that's been spread to the four corners of the mosque. And that's where it stops, because nobody else is buying it in a million years. Islam is as Islam does, and as long as the Saudis hold the reins and continue to finance extremists and to teach children violence and hate, then Islam is Islam, and peace has nothing to do with it. And every concession we make to it is an invitation to the past to reach out a bony hand and grab us by the nuts. And we're already on a slippery slope which is being liberally greased by our own leaders who don't like freedom any more than Islam does. And that's why Islamists are free to say whatever they want to in our society, to criticise us, to insult us for the way we dress, for the way we behave, our culture, our values, even calling for homosexuals to be killed without being arrested for incitement to murder, because that might inflame community relations. But anyone who so much as raises an eyebrow in protest at any of this is immediately accused of hate speech. Well. Personally, I don't do hate speech because I think hate is a self-destructive emotion and therefore rather a stupid one. But I do a pretty good line in disdain and contempt speech and anyone who thinks their faith should trump my freedom is going to get that by the bucket load. Sorry to be so disrespectful and everything. It's just that I believe the time to start defending your freedom is while you've still got it, not after it's gone. And that's why I think that this conference in Geneva should be boycotted by all civilised countries. The Canadians, to their credit, have already opted out. Let's just hope that some pin-headed human rights commissioner doesn't force them to change their minds. We've been exposed to Islam up close in the West um, for about well, a couple of decades, I suppose, ever since the Rushdie affair brought it to everyone's attention, like a shovel to the back of the head. And we've had a chance to take a good long look at it from our perspective and to measure it against our cultural values. <laughs> Remember them? And many of us don't like what we see, I'm afraid. In fact, we're appalled and disgusted by much of what we see, and we're going to say so, loud and clear. Well, some of us are anyway. And anyone who doesn't want to hear that had better shut their ears along with their minds, because free speech is our birthright in the civilised world. It's what made us the civilised world. And we know it's our lifeline to the future. And if we let anyone pick it apart, then our society has no future, which is exactly what the Islamists intend. Because make no mistake, what the people behind this resolution want is to turn this planet into a prison camp 
into a worldwide religious police state like Saudi Arabia is today. And that's not a fantasy, it's a reality. Where women are treated as property, minorities abused and victimized, where execution or mutilation away anyone who steps out of line, where there's no other religion allowed, and where there's no beer. And just on its own, that would be enough for me, quite frankly. And if we carry on as we have been in the West, staying silent about this, either through fear or through misplaced cultural sensitivity, if we keep letting ourselves be bullied and pushed around by radical Islam and its fellow traveling multiculturalist pimps, then little by little, resolution by phony bullshit resolution, our freedom will be eaten away until it's no longer recognizable as freedom at all. At which point you may wake up and look around wondering what the hell happened there as some bearded ignoramus hands you a one-way ticket back to the 7th century. Enjoy. Peace and happy days. <laughs>